but it's going to go long and it goes in towards the box and takes a ricochet or two then make up to hook it away and now it arrives with Hudlin, a good first touch and looking to get it through towards Donawa and then a sliding challenge but the counter attack could still be on with Makeup looking to get it out towards the left with Donawa. Uh, and that's unfortunate there for the Moors. Twice they were looking for the free man in space and couldn't get it and then Murphy potentially bringing down Stora there but no foul and then a bit of a miss hit clearance from Wilkinson rise with Donawa who looks to curl it in towards the top far corner and wasn't a million miles away. Branson taking a while to set this one up. This is surely going towards Hudlin, but it actually goes beyond him and towards Donahue, who was looking for a flick on there. Just looking to poke it beyond the goalkeeper and not quite able to get to it in the end. <laughs> Knowles being chased down by Callum Maycock and it could set up a counter. Sabara is in the middle, but Maycock a ball play, the one, two. Now look for a ball inside to Hudlin. Ball looking for a shot and it's oh. off the inside of the post and I was just about to say the goalkeeper did not look positioned for a shot to come in there and James Ball saw it too. Have a look, say, opportunity now, uh, sending the big men up. Yeah, the seas did seem to just part and it certainly caught people off guard. Stora now just hitting the free kick high and it should arrive with the goalkeeper except that Hudlin has oh. gone in the way the ball is in the net but you heard the whistle before it went in that's always going to go the way of the defense uh, yeah the striker jumps up with the goalkeeper I think the goalkeeper's made a meal of it um, I know they do get protected but um, like I said maybe Hudlin has caught him there it's but... the f it's the follow through really from Hudlin that, that's drawn the foul gaining yards just compared to where the ball went out of play now Stora a bit of a ricochet off of him has actually set up ball in a good position Hudlin's the only man ahead of him but he's found a good ball that way and Hudlin looking to turn and then strike and has that come off the goalkeeper will it take it a deflection anyway so uh, corner is the call and uh, Kyle Hudlin there really was not in position to strike there and more importantly the angle for ball to play it to him wasn't really favorable and in the end Hudlin with a fantastic first touch sets up his, his own half chance really he's looked confident with his feet throughout the game but now he just looks that much more hungry as well as there's plenty of pushing in the box as the Moors just gather a load of bodies in the goal mouth and headed in by Justin Donawa and well, there's been so many calls for Donawa to get a start and finally he gets one and lo and behold, he scored. It's Moore's one, Yovo nil here at the Sport Nation Dotbet Stadium. Justin Donawa really just peeling away from the markers at the back post and he's gotten his first Moore's goal. Yeah, it was a superb header by Jordan Piccadilly. It was an interesting amount of pulling of, of shirts that was doing by the Yeovil players. Uh, last time out here at the Sport Nation Dartbet Stadium, uh, th on this occasion, his day cut short. Uh, there's a lot more because well, Hudlin, it's gone beyond and now Ball, can he find Donald for a second goal? He's going to go for it himself and it is a good save in the end. Yeah, credit to the keeper there. He stood up well um, to tip it around to the post there. Well, the, the Moors, of course, will be disappointed not to have gone with a, a, gone two ahead there. Ball with a, a good opening could also have passed it to Donovan, but I think the more he waited on it, the better it was just to have a shot, and he was able to test the goalkeeper. Hudlin once again waiting alongside Ball. And it goes towards Ball, who wins a flick on. It could arrive with Sabara or with Hudlin. And it was a pretty good shot from Hudlin in the end, just considering the, the, the height of the bounce on the ball. Seen him mainly uh, for Yeovil play out towards the left, but he is uh, more of a right-sided player, at least if, if, if you believe the Moors. Uh, there's a great long ball up towards Hudlin. And he's picked out Joe Sabara here, who has just been charged down, but has a chance for a shot at the near post. And I think he was just trying to catch the goalkeeper uh, by surprise there. Murphy there up against McNally, who gets a good touch to it, but the ball through towards Worthington from a Yeovil perspective is wayward. Now Maycock can bring it out towards Sabara. Tough collision there with Kelly, who comes away with it. Sabara can't get back goal side of his man. And the ricochet brings it through towards Offside. Bucket. Offside. The goal will not count. 
No, Yeovil is saying, the yeah, the ball, the, the, the Yeovil is saying the ball was played by a Solly or Moore's player, which in effect means it wouldn't be offside. Yeah, I thought I saw the linesman give a thumb up and it looks like the goal's been given. Yeah. So Ryan Boot is trying to argue that he's offside when the ball was played. So even though there is a ricochet in it, it counts as offside from the original attempt at playing the ball and therefore the goal shouldn't stand. You're a ref, Stato. What's your interpretation <laughs> well, I'm of looking that? At... So, no, if the, ball's, if the ball is played there by Carl Storer and it is actually played, then the original offside fen positioning isn't an offence. We're just looking at the replay now. There. And so Kyle Storer has played the ball. Yeah, he's put Kyle his foot Storer out has stuck it. his foot out deliberately to try and guide it back to Ryan Boot. And on that basis, the, the, to give the goal is the correct decision. A little ricochet that then Storer has just tried to do the right thing about. And it's ended up wrong, really. There could be space now for Dunaway to try and strike. And off the post! And it's the second time in this game a shot across the face of goal from that exact area of the field comes off the post and Yeovil uh, left rattled once again. They've got to believe another chance will come. De definitely so, Ben. It, it can, it, it, it's always frustrating when you lose a lead and go back to 1-1. But when you think it's because of a referee injustice... And there it is, Donawa right again uh, as the ball bounces to him. And once again, he's just peeled away uh, from essentially the, the back end of the set piece. And it's been flicked over to him and he's just blasted it home. And goals like London buses for Justin Donawa. He gets two today, having been waiting for his first before today. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a long throw in from Russia Ship Brown. We've said in the first half that can be a weapon. But you just see Dono, the cleverness of him, just to peel away from his defender. So the, the oval defenders, they're ball watching. They've got the road man, but they're ball watching. And instinctively, they've all taken a step towards the ball. Dono has, has used his brain. He just took two steps back. And yet again, the man you'd least expect from a long throw to get the goal has scored it for Solly or Moores. Yeah, so not exactly in terms of the decision for the oval goal but in terms of the passage of play, the Moors, uh, justice done for them. Uh, and now, once again, it's going to bring the likes of McNally into play. Piggott forward too. But of course, Justin Dunaway in there looking for his hat-trick. Here comes the ball towards Dunaway and the goalkeeper just punching it away from him. Still alive with Sabara trying to get it back in and Hunter is beating and the goalkeeper to it. And it is onside and the Moors have made it three goals to one here with Kyle Hudlin and to be fair we were saying earlier about the free kick that went the way of Reese McNally and the goalkeeper had to run out to it and once again the goalkeeper effectively been left in no man's land seemingly by his defence yeah, to, to be fair, the defending from Yeovil at set pieces, it, it is shocking. Um, they just don't appear to be picking the right men at all. Um, the ball has come clear and there's three of them just let Hudley... They're just expecting the goalkeeper to come and get it. He can't make up that much ground. Yeah, I mean, I was always taught as a kid, and I appreciate this a very long time ago, that when the ball is clear that you stay with your man initially and that, that man is still your responsibility and yet you've still got three Yeovil players there and they're leaving it to the goalkeeper to come out now. Whether it's because they know what Adam Smith is like, I don't know, I've not seen him before. Corner's going to come from Cranston and Dunaway will line up actually right on the goal line. So I wonder if we'll see the same sort of set piece that we saw in the first half. McNally is in that area as well. Storer, James Ball, Kyle Hudlin right in the goal mouth. Pickett there too, it goes in towards Hudlin and bounces for Sabara. And that was a tricky uh, ball to strike as on the, it just bounced down to him on the half volley. Uh, it wasn't too far away. After the goal, I'm willing to trust his judgment as ball there leaves it hanging rather awkwardly. And well, he got in the way, but he didn't clear it. And then the Moors won a head injury and this, well, Charlie Lee shouts, Right away. I can't actually see who it was that went down. It could it's only be Jordan Piggott because yeah, I can't a, see yeah, uh, number 17 out on the field. Yeah, Piggott went down in just a melee of players there and uh, Charlie Lee's complaining. I, I don't think Moores are appealing for a free kick. I mean, there might have been at the time. There was actually push. clear contact on the replay. We can see that Hunt and uh, Piggott uh, clashed heads. 
It's towards Ryan Boot. Now the Moors get it down the left-hand side. Storer hitting it high. Hudlin in contention for it. It's headed away but goes back to Storer. Now arrives with Donawa, who you know just wants to shoot, but he tees it up for Ben Usher Shipway towards the back post and he hits the bar with the cross there. Storer now to get back towards Donawa. It's headed back away from Yeovil towards Nerfil, who oversteps the mark and almost confuses Cranston away from the ball in the process where you worry about them leaving gaps behind but he was confident with his own pace to burn off Reese Murphy there that he called for it when the oval player was actually closer to the ball than he was plenty of tugging there against Hudlin but uh, no decision and the ball go through to James Ball and Ball makes it for you feel like that has been coming and once again just ball watching uh, as the ball is played towards the outside left and there was nobody really within about three or four yards of James Ball and all he had to do was just poke it inside the near post and that's exactly what he did. Yeah, it, it, I'd love to be a fly on the wall when the Yeovil manager goes through his debrief with the players when they show back these goals. Um, who is taking responsibility to the back on each of these four goals? Um, every single time, it's from a, re it's from a set piece and we just, Sonny Moore just seems to have a man spare. Charlie Lee appealing for offside there. He can clearly see that Hunt was playing ball onside by quite some distance. I don't know if he's appealing for offside or he's just appealing for help because he's, he's just lost there, Charles Lee. It'll be Kelly to curl it in. And it's right at Ryan Boot who has to dive somewhat to make a save and now make up helping out along with Mitch Hancock. And now Sabara with the ball spinning in front of him gets it away looking for Rooney. But a yellow shirt, not able to get on the end of it. However, given away. Storer now towards Donawa. Can he get through on goal? Hancock's with him. He's going to go for it himself and he gets his hat trick. Just in Donawa. And look at everybody racing towards him. Well, those of you who've been calling for a start, what a start you've got from Justin Donawa. A hat trick. He caps it off in stoppage time on the counter, just blasting it past Adam Smith at the near post. Yeah, he's given the goalkeeper no chance whatsoever with the power of that shot. Um, Han Hancock was running up in support, but there was no way on earth the ball was going to be passed to Hancock on that occasion. Donner had two goals to his credit already, uh, potential for the hat-trick, and he's took that superbly. Um, a, a strike any striker would be proud of. Yeah, it's one of those. Hancock's is probably the better option, uh, but if he if he doesn't if he if he doesn't score, and you're uh, the last minute of game where they're one 0 down instead of five one, it goes all the way to Sass Davis, but Boot gets in front of him to collect, and that is the full time whistle. What an absolutely fantastic performance! I think the five one arguably just slightly flatters the Moors, uh, but really they were able to take advantage of the set piece problems and then score two good goals of their own obviously uh, with the, the delightful chip ball from Donawa who of course has an assist to go with his hat trick uh, for the, the fourth goal for James Ball and then of course Donawa finishing it off on that excellent breakaway move.